Welcome back to the LCQ here on CCL Bravo stream. My name is Seymour. Beside me is Cruz, and we're here to step in for the last match of the night. But Jesse, before we kick things into gear and move on forward, let's talk about what we just saw. Oh, reverse sweep in round one of the LCQ. Doesn't happen very often. That was a banger. Yeah, I mean, if you weren't expecting to come to the CCL last chance qualifier and just see banger match after banger match and see upset after upset after upset. I mean, even our first match, we saw a tier four team right. on alpha today, 3-0, a tier three team. So, I mean, if you were coming here and expecting not to see craziness in that last chance qualifiers in a collegiate tournament, I think you were crazy for thinking so. Hey, you're in the wrong spot. If you came here and expected that, but to move on for Jesse, you know, round 11 game five upset great and all but we're not done tonight we still got one more match on the night and we're heading over to the western group g just to see that let's introduce this head-to-head -head. we got california state university in long beach going up against bethany college in round number two of the lcq so we're moving on forward we can take a look at that head-to-head -head and see the, uh, see these two teams jesse when we kind of move into these two squads you see bethany uh, or Bethany College coming off of their round one victory recently. I mean, just, I guess, before they started this one. And it was a game five for themselves yep. where they kind of took care of business. What are you looking at from them going into this game? Well, I mean, they did just come off of a big victory. Like you said, they were going against USAFA. And I mean, it was a tight matchup all the way through. They took the first two maps in the series. USAFA took the control three to two. They took the Berlin hard point 250 to 230. But Bethany, they closed it out on the Berlin search and destroy. They took both S&Ds inside of that series. And I think you can see inside of the head to head that they're, you know, a little bit better of an SMD team than maybe CSULB. But the big difference, though, between these two teams is that CSULB was a tier two team and Bethany College was a tier three team. So you can take what you want from the season records. Bethany definitely had a little bit easier of competition to play up against when they went into tier three. But either way, I mean, both teams have been performing very well throughout a lot of this season. No, you're right. And, and one thing that we kind of have been setting up, Jesse, you and I, throughout this LCQ is every single match is going to be a harder match as you move forward. So if you're Bethany yeah. College right now, you're expecting to be playing a better team in CSULB. So going into the series, we can just see if, you know, all of that practice and all that momentum pays off against a team when you're batting up. But let's introduce our rosters for the night. When we're looking at our home team, you're looking at California State University Long Beach and representing them, we got Prism Hunter, V Flow, Twonky, and CTC Chris. And this roster, I mean, you're looking at two players really to be leading the way for this team, and that's V Flow and CTC Chris. Both these players constantly across all three game modes out in front in terms of the slaying category, always playing at another level. But if this CSULB roster wants to be able to make that push, if they want to be able to live up to the name of their past team that was able to finish top 12 in CCL playoffs just last season, this team needs to find a new level to hit going into this playoffs. Definitely going to have to look to hit that uh, hit that level, Jesse. But, you know, first off, they got to hit it against this away team, Bethany College. Let's introduce their opponents. You got Loss, Gump, Toxic Ambush, and Dimos coming off a win against Yusafa to get now into this round two matchup. And Bethany College had a very good start to stage two. Like I said, they kind of dropped down to I, what I guess you could call a little bit easier of competition, but it's never easy inside of CCL to really get wins. But they went down to the tier three and they started six and zero. Oh. Everything was looking so great. But unfortunately for them, they actually lost their last three matches in a row. And in doing so, what that forced out was for Bethany College to actually have to play a in that last match just to make it here today if they didn't end up losing that last match they would have been in a position where they only had to play two lcq matches now they have to play three elimination matches in a row for a chance to be able to do it but they've already done it once so who says they can't hey, do it again here today you're right you know it's unfortunate when you look at it jesse but you know what they say what doesn't kill you makes you stronger so we're looking at bethany college to see if they can roll with the punches and get better as the series goes on but let's set the mood for this best of five jesse let's take a look at the maps for this series because if you're looking at it i mean bethany college they love their game five so you've got to be watching out for the long run here we're starting off on berlin map number one we go to double dose of tuscan for maps two and three and if this does go to the distance you're looking at gavitu and desert siege to close things out i'm really excited about that desert siege last i really really hope 
that we get there and we get a desert siege because you just never know what you're going to get out of a desert siege search and destroy i feel like teams either love that map or you hate that map so to, so to see that map come through in an lcq match is right. really big uh not 100 sure on who picked which map coming into this one but to see that map even just come through kind of just tells you that one of these two teams is going to be very comfortable on that desert siege map no, and Jesse, it's one of those maps that, you know, I've said before on stream, it's it's one that when you see it, you know that the team has been practiced because not a lot of the teams are practiced on that Desert Siege. So it's interesting when it does come out. But starting off this series on a Berlin Hardpoint, which is an interesting pick when we're going through this because you and I got to watch that Bethany Swedes game in their round one matchup versus the United States Air Force Academy. And... They were playing on a Berlin hardpoint, and, and it was a close one. It was close. But they lost it at the end. So the fact that it's coming out tried and true right front and center in this matchup, I have to be a little bit worried. You know, honestly, I'm not too worried for them. Uh, like, yeah, you know what? They lost it, but what that does is it just gives you a chance to look back at it from earlier on today and just be like, hey, you know what? Yeah, we lost it. It, it sucks, but we just need to come out now, put that in the back of our mind, and come out and play our game on this hard point map. You can't come into this one playing CSUOB's game. This team in Bethany was a good enough team to be a Tier 2 team. They just lost a couple close series early on in the season, which ultimately ended up being the difference maker between them being a Tier 2 and a Tier 3 team. And then even still, they, they lost a couple of series towards the back half of Stage 2 that ultimately made them have to play three matches in the LCQ versus two. So this team is definitely good. It just needs to, they just need to clutch up and win out these series when it matters most. And I don't think a series matters more than this one right here, right now, Colin. So what we're trying to say, folks, is this is the redemption arc of Bethany Swedes. Let's see if they can get it going against CSULB. Berlin Hardpoint, map number one. Teams look like they're ready to go. So Jesse... We are going to hop into this. And I like what you're saying about this. I mean, Bethany Swedes is that GG go next mentality. You see, it kind of, you know, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? It's just go into the next game, whole clean slate. Let's see if they can wipe it off and try to exactly. back up to CSULB. Yeah, for sure. And it's not even like that hard point that they lost was like a, a bad hard point that they lost. They lost 250 to 230, right? Like it was a close, close game. One different hill goes your way. And Bethany comes out with the win inside of that map, and we don't even end up seeing a fourth map or a fourth map inside of that series. So, well, we'll, we'll see what it is. But obviously, right off the rip of this game, we missed the first hard point, but hopping right into the second and CSULB with a very good start here. Bethany did fall very far behind the U.S. Air Force in that match, but they brought it all the way back to that 250 to 230 closing out score line. So, I mean, if they can find a way to maybe not fall so far behind off the start of this game, it would give them a better chance in the back, uh, second half. Well, they're trying to find a way, but they need to hop into the hill for a little bit of contention. Gump's going to do that, but not for long. Prism Hunter removes him, and the rest of Bethany Swedes funneling on in behind that. Still a contention until CTC Chris decides otherwise. He's going to line up two to close things off. Now 15 seconds before we're looking at this third hill, and Beeflo, he's already here. Takes a few shots, gives himself away, but it doesn't matter. No, no communication to take him down. Loss force for the trade but in there to take care of things prism hunter right where his team left off jesse so mixy going into this third hill v flow looking to close things out with the help of twonky and they break on in for the rotation and that's just a perfect rotation from CSULB. I mean, they obviously got a good chunk of time on P1. We're able to rotate it into P2 and look at this. A perfect rotation over towards P3 and CTC Chris, one of the guys that we were highlighting coming into this one, already with full streaks, Colin, starting the right. game 12 and two. I mean, that is a ridiculous start to a game. And if you ever want to put a team in the dirt really early on, just call CTC Chris up. I mean, it's just exactly like you say, just call him up, let him do his work and you know, it's magic on the map right now, Twonky. We keep his toes fresh into the hill. Drops 19 HP, but walks away with a double. 89 to 20. You still have 15 seconds to, to collect here if you're the shark. So looking to mass 100 points, heading into the fourth hill to Bethany Swedes. Only 20. Look at this play from Twonky. He's oh, already no. here. He's got a pinch with his teammate. You got player number four and player number two looking to see if they can weed out these last couple players, pull these spawns, and it looks like with V Flow collecting that kill onto Gump, I mean, that should be spawns flipped. Yeah, and Prison Hunter already just spawned up there, so absolutely spawns a flip. Bethany, you, you need to do a better job of rotating here. CSULB is just wiping the floor with them right now. I mean, this is this is really, really bad off the start of this game. That, that you cannot give up all the time 
at P3 and then lose the rotation to P4. You at least need to put up a fight. They're trying to fight it from the front now, but it would have been a lot better if they could fight it from the back if they were holding on to those spawns. But it's just unfortunately not the situation that they're in right now. But doing a good job from the front. Ooh. Don't get me wrong. They get a four down. They can push forward now and try to get these spawns in their favor. But CSU will be with those close spawns still in the back. They can still reinforce this hill quite quickly. Well, this is must, must need times for Bethany Swedes as they're down 125 to what could be one or to 46 at the end of this fourth hill. And hill five, Lowe's up top. He's going to find one. Can you find a second one? Drops to the secondary, recovers an MP40. He's still not good enough to go up against Twonky. And you see two down now for Bethany Swedes on the rotation to hill five. As this is normally a scrappy hill, but with the way the Sharks are playing, Jesse, this could very well be a money hill. And for this Bethany roster as well, they, they have absolutely been a very good team this year. I mean, Loss and Gump generally are the t the players on this team leading the way in terms of slaying. It was Toxic Ambush in their back three games that was really kind of struggling, Colin. And again here today, 7-11 and 11 so far to start this game up. We need the other two players on Bethany, Toxic and Demos, to, to really pick it up in the back half of this series, in the back half of this map, even if they want to be able to come back into this one. Well, finally a break from Bethany. Won't last for too long as Prism Hunter gets right back into the driver's seat for this middle of the map hill. You look at the rotation too. Usually we've seen Bethany Swedes first one there and getting broken by the Sharks. But there's a chance now for the Sharks to be the first ones rotated and see if they can make this game a little bit out of reach. As they are looking to lock down this office hill. V-Flow takes down low. So second one from CTC Chris. And that should be numbers now for the Sharks. Three go down from Bethany. Closest one is going to be Toxic Ambush. Who does find a kill onto Twonky Jesse. But it's not enough to break through just yet. You see CTC yeah. Chris and Prism Hunter. They line up two again. It's just maintaining the space for Bethany Swedes to be away from the hill. And I don't want to be that so guy. Hard. But CSU will be... I mean, I felt like if we, they won this rotation over to this, this is probably the game here. Because you're going to get to a point, if you're Bethany here, where you just need to play perfect COD. And I mean, I feel like that point was probably two hard points ago. And right now, CSULB, they're just doing too good of a job of rotating from every hill to every hill and just not allowing Bethany to really get any time on a lot of these hills. And yeah, I mean, CSULB. What, uh, and again, now from P1 over to P2, looking like they should win this rotation as well, Colin. Only 50 seconds, Jesse, to put this game number one in the books. Now, this needs to be a monumental comeback for Bethany Swedes. There's no room for error going through the rest of this hard point. Dymo is going to be hopping into the hill to soak up some time early, but surrounding them like sharks is CSULB to immediately break this hill, start to see if they can put some pressure on these players. And they do. You still got Los in behind. You have a full collapse coming in from Bethany Swedes. Dymos finds two to break this one open. Three go down. It's a clean break so far. They just need to take one more player down. Prism Hunter around the outside. And it's not going to be an easy kill. Gump will slay him out. And now these 30 seconds looking to get picked up. But you still need to watch out for the respawns. Because Viflo right back into business. Breaks the hill. Takes down Dymos. Has to find Gump but won't be able to walk away with it. Now looking at the rotation. Yeah, it's tough too because they need to hold on to the remainder of that time but also get the perfect rotation over towards the new hill it's going to be prison Los, you need to be looking that way prison just got a kill oh. inside of fire low prison can't double it up on the back side there so spawns they still should be good at least for now for bethany in the back once the once this hill pops and once the players end up falling but player four v flow around the back finds two completely flips the spawns out now putting Ooh, csub cool. in a spot where they can put this game away here and Chris drops the hammer. Look how far away Bethany Swedes are running away. It's desperation to get back to this hill. Number three, Jesse. And they need to funnel on in one by one just to get a toe on through. Ten seconds now until CSUB close out this map. Number one on the front line will be Bethany Swedes. But look at that. Having a break through the gate that's been set up for the Sharks. And four go down. A commanding map number one out of CSUB Sharks. As they're going to be walking away with Berlin Hardpoint, 250 to 76. Put them in the club, 100 point club, CSULB. I mean, this this is exactly what you get from a tier two team, though. Like a very, very talented team. 
is the CSULB roster. I, I think that we are all expecting them to come out and play very strongly in some of the hard points. One of the, uh, or in the respawns, especially as this team is a very, very good respawn team and showing it here once again. I mean, not the best respawn record in terms of hard point in stage two, but overall 15 and 14 coming into this one in respawn CSULB, they know what they need to do to get these hard points done. And I mean, that was pretty much as close to a flawless game as you could get while allowing the other team to score a few points here and there. And you know, Jesse, I, I was kind of paying attention to the slang throughout that whole thing. And what I was liking out of California State University of Long Beach is that they weren't allowing Bethany Swedes to get comfortable whatsoever, even on the rotations. You saw that toxic ambush at the end there, 9 and 21, just numbers you don't like to see out of a player individually. And it was just showing that the Sharks were maintaining good pressure onto the back line constantly and never allowing that early setup for the rotations through Bethany Swedes. And that's what you expect when you're seeing a difference from a Tier 3 team to a Tier 2 team. It's the little things that matter, and the Sharks were showing that they have the, the just the little comms, the little communication points to make sure that they're always on Bethany Swedes. It, it was that, and it was the respawns. Or not the respawns, sorry. The, um, the Just always being able to pull the spawns. For, for CSUOB, I felt like every single hill that they went to, they had the favored side for spawns going into each hill. Even going into that very last hill of the game, when we went back to fire for the second time, I mean, they were the team in the backside, not originally, Bethany was there first, and they broke through the back, they found all the kills in the back, they pulled the spawns, and as soon as they got the spawns, Bethany was never able to get back inside of the hill. If you're always putting yourself in the right advantage in the right place at the right time, you will win hard points playing like that. Right. It's just fundamental. And CSU will be just played that game. It basically felt like they were playing checkers, Bethany was playing, or they were playing chess, and Bethany was playing checkers. I already screwed up the analogy. Come on, man. Uh, it, <laughs> you had it, too. It, it, just, it just happens, right? <laughs> But, you know, you're right. It's just it comes down to fundamentals. And at one point, if you're just allowing a team like Sharks to maneuver through the map as fundamentally as they did, it's just it's hard to get past it. So now we're going to be moving on as we're looking through the maps. We're done with the hard point on Berlin. Now we move to the Tuscans, Jesse. Back to back Tuscans for map two and three. And if you're thinking about anywhere for Bethany Swedes to step up to the plate, I think they've been a fantastic team inside the stage two to make an improvement on their search and destroy. So I'm really looking at this map two to go their way. Yeah, absolutely. And you're, you're absolutely correct. Their search and destroy got so much better in stage two. They went from being a five and eight team in stage one to a six and two team inside of stage two in terms of their search and destroy, leaving them at an overall of 11 and 10. When you look at CSULB, eight and 13 overall. So if Bethany was to come back anywhere inside of the series, I love that point from you. It probably will be here inside of the search of destroys and they'll have to steal a respawn at some point to get towards that game five as well but there's a great spot to kind of start that them to be able to come back to life here and we saw even in the last series i know like not everybody inside of the ccl got to see that game but we got the opportunity to sit in on the bethany game we were just watching it through uh the, through their school stream and uh they won both the search of destroys inside of that series as well so clearly s and on point today for bethany and uh, this is just becomes an absolute must win map for me here, Colin. Also, I want to give a big shout out to the Bethany College production. I'm pretty sure that is a school run production. It was pretty it was pretty good. I was enjoying my time too for that one. So big shout out to them for putting that on. Got to see a little bit of action early, like Jesse was saying, but not for Bethany. I mean, it's I have to say, do or die right here because if in that series, Jesse, once the control that started an almost reverse sweep against them, so you don't want to put everything on that map number three right now if you're Bethany Swedes. As we hop into the search and destroy, you're looking at Bethany Swedes to be on the offense first and already losing out on Los. That was all the way through the middle of the map and Dimos. Oh, seems Dimos. like he expects a player to be there. Actually, gets the stun on the Twonky. Chows it. There's the trade. That's big kill. 3v3 now. Bethany now taking this bomb over towards oh, the B site, though. Winter. Prism's in a great spot right now. Basically, has flipped the map out on the opposing team's roof. But he actually drops down towards middle of the map, maybe just trying to sneak and find out this flank before it happens. But little does he know, the flank has already gone through, and he was not the wiser to it at the moment. He does see his door open, though, so we'll start to make his way over. But that is not where the bomb is going, and V-Flow finds that out. But V-Flow with the pistol! Huge wins! And it doesn't matter, because Prism Hunter found Dimos nonetheless. And he's already hightailed it through the middle of the map, Jesse. Has eyes on the bomb. 
Don't know if he got a call from VFlow that the bomb was down, but there's 23 seconds. You have to imagine that it's a 50-50 call right now for Prism Hunter. And Toxic Ambush oh. is the one to make the play. Oh, good timing here. Toxic doesn't spawn him out. Prism Hunter doesn't see him either. And that's going to be Bethany Swedes clutching up in a 1v1 to take round one. And that's just a classic situation of being tunnel visioned on something else and not seeing that player in your peripheral vision. And Toxic Ambush, very weak map one, already coming out 2-0 here inside. Big, two big one-on-one -on -one wins there inside of that to, get, to take it from a 1v2 to winning out the round for himself. Absolutely love to see it there. And Colin, one thing I was going to bring up was CTC Chris had an uh, insane map number one. So if Bethany's going to win this series as well, the big thing that they need to do is shut down Chris as much as possible. And already in round number one, they were able to get that done. This time around, Chris opens up with first blood, but look at the answer back. It's been twice the way of Bethany Swede. Gump looking for a little bit more. Is going to tag up President Hunter on the exit, but a lot of map control right now from Bethany Swedes and it's Gump. Leading the way, had a fantastic hard point, Jesse. Led the team in slaying. Now looking to continue that momentum into this round number two. And what do you do here if you're the Sharks? I mean, you are stuck in your spawn. What's your way out? So right now, it seems like they are just waiting to see if somebody on Bethany overextends and gets a little bit too aggressive. So they can try to pick them off, make it a 2v2, and then decide what they want to do. But eventually, once this clock starts to window down more and more, this is where they're going to need to find a way to pull out, get towards a different portion of the map. And it looks like they want to hit out towards middle. You can see Chris has moved out, maybe trying to find an angle, see if he can spot anything. And he doesn't see anything over at A. Prism Hunter also wins a gunfight over at A. And now they have to make a choice of 25 seconds left on where they want to go with this bomb. When you look at this, Bethany Swedes holding hands through the middle of the map. Toxic Ambush and Dimos have already cleared out B. And are in a spot to punish. CDC throws down the crossfires. There, Dimos puts the nail in the coffin. Two rounds in a row from Bethany Swedes to open up the search and destroy. And, and a wonderful play call out of yeah. them as well, Jesse. Yeah, I love that play call to kind of just sit middle of the map, watch each other's backs. Can't get can't both get shot in the back in that spot there. And there's basically two things that CSULB could have done. They could have wrapped towards A exactly like how they did, or they could have went over towards B. And if they went towards B, Bethany would have been in a great spot to be able to retake that bomb site very quickly with having that much bin map presence. And CSULB from the very rip off that round there, as soon as they lost those two players in that trade and were down in a 3v2, it was going to be a rough spot from that point on. Now Bethany back on offense, taking this bomb back over through middle of the map. This time it will be Chris that gets dropped for first blood. And instantly Bethany Swedes once again with the advantage inside of another round. Uh, first blood, it's been lost twice in a row. This time he answers back, and it's a wonderful change now. Dimos looks like he understands that the Sharks have a ten tendency to get aggressive through P5. VFlo is going to be here alone. Gump opens the door. VFlo just the tiniest bit of a gap, and he's going to find the trade. That's all 3v3, he needed. 3 and that's bombed down. That is bombed down right on the outside. Now we'll see if Demos tries to get a little bit aggressive to go pick that bomb up, but VFlo which is going to back up, played their life for the time being. And I, oh, did he spot him? I feel like he may have just spotted him. I think oh, he did. Uh, either he spotted him or he is just watching this door like through the small little crack of it to get any little bit of information he can. But Demos getting that bomb and hightailing it out of there over towards the A site now. Relatively, if they can overwhelm Prism on here, they might be able to get this bomb down, but you still. Have to be wary of player number seven, Twonky. In the position to get that toxic ambush. He finds two over towards A. That's going to be bombed down. V flow last alive in a 1v3. We'll have to be an ace in the round to put one on the board for the Sharks. He's going to find the first gunfight right away. Not ready for a Dimos catch him slacking. That's going to be three unanswered rounds from Bethany, Jesse. What a it's... way to answer back from map, map one. Yeah, it's so crazy, right? The fact that you can go from being 100-point club to now up 3-0 inside of a search and destroy, it just kind of goes to show you how different every single mode it is and how that you're never out of a series when you're good and really, really good at just one mode or another when it comes down to a lot of these games. So it's good to see, though, for Bethany, able to bring their way right back into it. I would love CSUOB to put up a little bit more of a fight here inside of the search and destroy but you know what we'll just have to wait and see as this goes vflow this time though gonna get extremely aggressive through middle of the map finds first blood should be able to get the second here as well and this is just a clean feed right now for csuob it seems like they just turned up the heat they run over bethany swedes and you dial it up to 100 <laughs> there's only one thing that's gonna happen after that it's the sharks with a flawless round number four to put themselves on the board and we get to see prism hunter with the rat in the final kill cam 
not too bad of a game out of the Sharks individually. It's just it's piecing it together. It seems that's the, that's the troubling part inside the Search and Destroy. You're getting things out of CBC, Chris, Prism Hunter, and V-Flow. Twonky, 0-3. It's okay. I've seen worse things than Search <laughs> and teams win, but it's just piecing it together, Jesse. It, it also kind of just feels like in the back half of – the rounds that's where you're seeing csb csu will be really fall apart because they've found multiple first bloods through middle of the map it's been chris like most of the time <laughs> who's been able to find these first bloods but in the later portions of the round though when it gets to those 2v2 situations or those 2v3 situations just feels like bethany just has a little bit more experience in that and that's why they're coming out on top but right now if csu will be can turn the heat up and really just take control of these rounds early on that's how I think they'll find success in the back half of this SMD. Well, it seems like that's been the recipe. V Flow is going to find Toxic Ambush and an ambush of his own, leaving Los last alive in a 1v3. 50 seconds left. And, well, technically, you know, just like we saw V Flow a couple of rounds ago, it would have to be an ace for Los if you want to put round four on the board. But Flow is going to tag him up. Look at the collapse coming in from the Sharks as player number five. CDC Chris has backed all the way up towards the B side. Blows nice shots onto Twonky. Makes it a 1v2. 30 seconds. This is relatively doable considering that bomb is at A. You find this 1v1 to oh. V-Flow. It could be the round in your hand, but look at that read from V-Flow. Hits the slide on the opposite end of the door. Catches the good timing. That's going to be two on the board for the Sharks. A little preemptive shots there. Maybe a little trigger discipline next time once you spot them out. But you know what? It did the job. It baited the player out, and he had the right timing to get that job done at the end of it. So it all works out. Could have been a lot scarier, though. You know, if he took those shots and ends up getting turned on into a 1v1, especially because Chris was in no position to be inside of that round at all to, like, get into that fight. But nonetheless, they do win the round out. V-Flow also finds himself on four in a row now, maybe even looking towards getting some streaks. Stun will go down over middle of the map. He also gets stunned, though, so needs to back up. Won't back up in time, and that's going to be lost finding first blood over middle. That's a big first blood, too. If you lose two rounds in a row, you want to get some traction going here. If you're Bethany Swedes. And last time we got this, it was Gump to, to fly. And he's doing the exact same thing around the outside. Won't pay off as Twonky will find the trade. But a 3v1 situation again. This time, the Sharks going to be on the back foot. And look at this position with Dymos. He's going to swat Twonky right in the windowsill. Nice and pretty. He's just sitting there. He's like, hey, I'll wait. Window shopping a little bit, Jesse. He's just waiting for his opportunity to take him to the cleaners. And he did. Six and three out of Dymos. He's going to close out the round. Yeah, that's a big, big win there to kind of get that two round buffer back into your favor again. If you're Bethany College, you want to try to close this one out as quickly as possible. And you know what? Not the greatest map still from Tonki here. Need him to pick it up a little bit for CSULB. But on the other side, I mean, Gump's not playing too, too much better at two and six. So. It's give and take right now. Both players doing an okay job. Everybody's trying their hardest right now for both these teams, and we'll see what they can do through middle of the map. It looks like the bomb. This is a very, very oh, classic Gump. hit. Oh, you pushed a little too far, Gump. Don't get the bomb down. You could have stretched it there. Wouldn't have even been seen. And now that's going to be bombed down in a 4v3 situation for CSUOB. That's the exact same play we saw to Twonky early on. Last time, though, it was Toxic Ambush who double peaked with Gump. Toxic Ambush will find that bomb and get out with his life, but the damage has been done. And you're going to need to answer back soon if you're Bethany Sweets, they do. Dymos finds the trade out to Twonky, too. That's going to be two down, flipping the lives in the advantage now of Bethany. And shots, information there on Prism Hunter. The nade in the back, he's not there anymore. Bomb should be going down very shortly as you're looking for a 2v3 or the retake. And Dymos gets a little bit too aggressive, so opportunity for CSULB to get something going, but not going to last too long as Los was there for the trade. 2v1, Prism Hunter gets stunned up. Information is there now where this last remaining player is. And look at the way that Bethany's playing this. Holding hands, basically. The crossfire's there. Ambush for the first shots. He's going to finish it out. No need for the help from Los. That's going to be five rounds now for Bethany Swedes. I liked the idea there for CSULB, though, on that retake. It kind of felt like they just wanted to group up and try to hit that from one side of the map together as opposed to hitting in through middle of the map. And they were able to find one. They were able to even out to the 2v2, but lost just in the perfect position to find that trade towards the end of that round, giving Bethany another round on the board. Only need one round left to close this one out here. CSULB, they'll need to win four rounds in a row now if they want to take this map number two. And, I mean, if they come back and they win four rounds in a row, that could just be the chokehold on the series that they need to close it out. But Loss will find opening blood through middle of the map once again. 
and already the oh, pressure of Bethany's Gump. just throwing it on them. <laughs> oh, man. It's his company right now. 1v4 for CDC Chris. He's 4 and 5. Inside the search is going to have to be 8 and 5 if you want to see another round. Get spotted out from Toxic Ambush. Gump's waiting for him. Now it's going to be 3 in a row in that round from Gump to close out on map number 2. What a way to bounce back if you're Bethany Swedes. You get 100 point clubs in the hard point, and you answer back with a 6 2 in the search. This is just back to back, one sided affairs, but on two different ends. Yeah, it was almost a flawless map one from CSULB, but you could say almost the exact same thing for Bethany there. Multiple rounds where they lose first right. blood, where they're not looking like they're going to be in a position to win those rounds out, but the longer they were able to stretch the rounds out, the longer they were able to go with a lot of those rounds. That's when you really saw Bethany looking at their best, and that last round was just s &D at its finest. Loss over You're middle right. of the map, finds first blood, opens things up, and what does that do? It allows Gump to just fly through middle of the map pick up the last three kills as well and close the game out as well. And Gump wasn't having a great map. So that's going to give a lot of confidence going in towards the back half of this series as well. You know, Jesse, I know Gump wasn't having the greatest map, but that was the strat every single time at a Bethany Swedes. And I'm surprised that the Sharks never picked up on it. As soon as Lowe's finds a first blood, it's just, hey, all right, Gump, go get him. <laughs> Fly. <laughs> Sick him. Basically, they're saying to Gump and, you know, uh, it didn't work all the time, but it did in that last round, and it looks good for Gump, especially to close it out. And it's one thing that we're talking about for Bethany Swedes going into this LCQ is stage one, they weren't the best search and destroy team. You know, they had actually a pretty poor record in search and destroy, especially their game fives. But going into game number or stage number two, they've really made a turnaround. And if they're coming in to play tier two teams like this in search, I mean, that is a dangerous search and destroy team. Oh, it absolutely is. And that's where Bethany is going to be at their most dangerous is inside Search and Destroy. That's already three maps now inside of the LCQ bracket that we've seen Bethany come out and take Search and Destroy. They haven't dropped one yet. The hard thing, though, for this roster is going to be taking a respawn off of right. the CSULB team. And even after CSULB, say Bethany wins this series, they go up against Oregon next. Oregon is going to be a very tough team. That's a good Search and Destroy team and a good respawn team. So you'll need to have it all. Bethany, they need to find a way to take a respawn here in this series. You know, we never really talked about it, Jesse, but this is the, the West division. And inside the West it's division... It's a killer division. <laughs> it's a killer division. I don't think there's a single bad team in this division. It's just as we go along, they just get better and better every single round. But folks, we're sitting 1-1 one, one after our first two maps. We've got the control coming up next. And it's going to be a swing map. Stay tuned for some more. We're going to cut to a break. And when we come back, we got another Tuscan. A short little break, but we are back heading into the third match of the game inside of the CCL Bravo stream. We got Bethany Swade, CSU will be Sharks one to one after our first two maps. And that's going to leave us in a swing map mode combo now going into Tuscan control for a map three, Jesse. And this is going to be an important one because when I was talking off the start of the show, I said that Bethany Swedes in their round one match against United States Air Force Academy. This was the start of an almost reverse sweep, so the control already hasn't been the best for today, but it seems like this needs to be where they bring it back. Yeah, it really does feel like that, right? We were talking during the break there. We were like, oh, damn, like, where can Bethany take right. this series at? It, it's, and it's either this hard point or this control. They need to win one of the two. It's hard to see them winning that hard point with the way that CSULB handled them in that map number one. I mean, you never know. It's definitely possible. But if I'm Bethany and I'm looking at this after that map one, I'm not feeling very confident going into a Gavu 2 of all things, where it's Money Hill after Money Hill, the way that you got ran and the way that CSULB was able to kind of rotate inside of that first game. So this feels like it's a must-win map again here for Bethany going into this control. They only lost 3-2 on that Gav control when we saw it in, in their last series. So going into this Tuscan, I mean, it's definitely possible. They just need to find a way, I think, to get that last defense. And if they do, I mean, anything's possible, right, Colin? Well, you know, Jesse, to play a little devil's advocate to the Gava 2 point, first off, I mean, Gava 2 compared to Berlin, you have a lot more opportunity to set up early on a lot of those points. So maybe Bethany Swedes could find their pacing inside of that hard point better than a Berlin. But uh, who knows? I, I definitely wouldn't stack it in their favor after seeing that map, map one. You're right. But, you know, you could play a little devil's advocate going for to sure. this map number four. But I, I think it really solidifies what you're saying for sure on this control. It needs to be where Bethany kind of kicks this into gear. A control 
would be your way into pushing it to a game number five at, at max, you know. Maybe you take it in four if you're Bethany Swedes. We don't know just yet. We're pulling at strings. But, you know, right now, if you're Bethany, you're aiming at that game number five. Your search and destroys are on point. Just try to get there. Yeah, absolutely. That's going to be the big thing, right? Like, if you can get to that game five, clearly you handled business against CSULB in that game number two. For sure. So it's, it's just getting there, right? That's the hard part for this Bethany team. And when I was looking back at that map number one, it was really kind of toxic ambush that was really slowing things down throughout a lot of that map one. He, I don't, he didn't find ten kills. Right, he finished under ten after the end of map one. It, it was, was either ten and twenty one. He was yeah. I was gonna say he was either right on the dot of ten or just under it, and you just need to be a little bit better than that inside. And we we was. need you no know, we better in the search for sure, but I think like inside of respawn, I'm talking about. I think right. that we need to see toxic ambush pick it up inside of the respawns if we want to see this team be able to come away with a map victory here because loss and gump they can't do it all on their own well that's the big question jesse can bethany find a respawn push us to a map number five and try to get another search and destroy against this tier two team and move on to play oregon it's going to be a tough one but every single road in this lcq is a long and treacherous one and it's never going to be easy when you're trying to qualify for ccl playoffs so you're looking at bethany to do what seems like the impossible right now against CSU will be and take a respawn, but I mean, Toxic Ambush, it's going to be a player definitely to keep your eyes on into this map number three as we're hopping on with the Sharks for the first offense. TDC Chris opens up with first blood. You got Gump on a flank and he's actually slipped the line. So good chance now for him to kind of cut things open. He's going to find Prism Hunter looking for a second, but he immediately disengages. They're going to leave Deeplo all alone. Gump goes to the spawn to dethrone Chris. He heads right back towards this A zone. It's going to be a flood on in to take down Vflo and a successful break. They just need to take down Twonky, and it seems like that's going to be a tough one as well. He's going to be alone working on that second take, Jesse. Yeah, Twonky actually goes massive here, now picking up two as well. This gives an opening now for another player for CSULB to be able to hop on, maybe get the a few more ticks of progression in here. And yeah, this should be the, the A zone completely done. That's very, very quick. They've got two and a half minutes now to make their way over towards B, trying to get their way into it. But it's going to come down and just need to do it as a full unit here if you're CSULB. A little bit of a slow start for Chris here, who has only had to find one kill throughout the you're start right. of this. A lot of the other portions of this team starting to pick it up here. And that could be a really, really scary oh. thought for Bethany. Gump gets away right there with a huge kill against Prism Hunter, opening up the middle of the map for player number eight, Dymos, now to start his flank. As Twonky is still alive in the enemy spawn right now. 28 HP, looking to finesse a little bit. Free stun, slides on in, wonderful against Lois. Look for the second one, playing his life to a T right now. Dymos does not know where to go. You're dancing with Twonky right now, and it's a tough grand fight, but he's going to take it out in his favor. Now look at a surge on forward of the rest of Bethany as they're trying to take these players off the B zone and Gump in the high ground will be good for one. Oh. Toxic Ambush takes down B-Flow and they give up a tick, but... No, it doesn't come through. Beth no, it didn't go through. Yeah, the tick does not come through. I was right there with you. I just did not see it finish and Toxic Ambush hopped on it just in the nick of time. But yeah, Twonky going so big in the back there. That opened up so much potential for CSULB to make their way through to the front, get inside. And they did for a small period of time there, but it was just a really, really good retake here for Bethany. This is going to be much harder to retake, though, because you've got a full four-man unit now here for CSULB. They're on the point. They're starting to get that B zone up. And now Bethany spawning out towards the deep side of the map are going to have to push and get inside this hill. Twonky's playing a lot more comfortable in the control than he was in the search. How do you get that kill in a lows? You would hope to get that one back if you're lowest the second time around, but a break now for CSULB to get into the zone. CDC Chris is going to win a huge gunfight against Dymos, continue this progress towards this B zone, but last four players for Bethany now to step up to the play. you got a minute to hold on to. An 8v2, and yeah, V-Close in your spawn. These last two players in the high ground, Los and Toxic Ambush, looking to work together, and wonderful Nate at Atwanki will make it a 1v7. And they know exactly where Toxic Ambush is. It's only a matter of time, Jesse, before they take him down. Actually going to make it a little bit choppy at first, but yeah, he's going to drop eventually. And that's going to be first round to the Sharks inside the control. A wonderful one indeed. Just going right back into business like what we saw in the hard point. Out slaying and out pacing Bethany. And I think the big thing there at the end of that round, though, Colin, is yes, you win that round if you're CSULB. But they only finished with four ticks of progress because they finished out with the kills inside of that round. So 
that that's kind of big. If Bethany is able to win an offense now and win it by ticks, that would surely could secure the final defense going in towards the rest of this game. So we'll, we'll just have to keep that in the back of our minds as we continue on here. But first job for Bethany now, though, is going to be the fact that they need to win an offense. Late play from B flow. Through fire. Wonderful nade at a low. So is going to catch Twonky over the middle of the map. And need this flank to come in soon if you are the Sharks. V flows here to take them down. Five soon in a row. Looking for a third. It's going to be CDC Chris to clear them off. So two ticks of progression from Bethany early towards A. As they go right back to the respawn. It looks like they want to hit A again. Yeah, they do. But CSUOB has so much pressure in middle of the map that it's going to be hard for Bethany to really get over towards this A zone right now. Yes, you have the opening through the top side of the map, but Wonderful. getting these kills all in the middle of the map and just being able to get some pressure out for yourself is going to be the first job here. And they've already done it, except for the fact that Twonky is still just running rampant in the middle of the map with going 11 and 6 right now. You got Fee flowing your spawn still on two in a row. Make it three in a row. It's going to be two down again for Bethany. Vflo is on a tear, 16 and 7 in the second round. It's an overextension towards B zone, but it's not going to pan out to anything, Jesse. It's just Bethany Swedes trying to make something out of nothing, and, it, and it's not working. I need this team to start clearing out their spawn before they work towards these points. This should be the A zone. I was just sorry. I was just looking at that to make sure that CSUOB wasn't going to be close enough. They they are. They they're able to finish that one off. Three lives left now in the differential here for Bethany. So not the worst life differential going in towards trying to fight A. They've got a minute and a half to work with. It's just I don't know how they break into this zone. It, it, there's just so much forward pressure right now for CSUOB that Bethany is going to need to get a wipe, group back up, and then get another wipe to get inside of B. See if they can first even out the tick progression, find a fourth one to this round. But a minute's been shaved off this clock. Looks like Bethany grouping up for one fell swoop into the back line. Here comes Toxic. It's one, it's a two minute prong attack, and that's going to pan out to nothing. Wonderful positioning out of V Flow to give Prism Hunter a little bit of leeway in that gunfight, and they take care of business relatively easily. The big thing here, though, is that Gump has kind of snuck the line. You don't see him if you're Twonky, so he's able to get into a spot here now. And with Delma, uh, with Demos winning that fight in the back as well, on top of Platt, this opens up even more room for Gump, but oh, he gets man. spotted out by Prison Hunter. And now, as soon as CSU will be find that last kill there, they should know that they've been able to find all four recently. Everybody should fly forward at this point on. Chris removes Dimos a second from V Flow 3. Go down in unison. There's no more respawns for Bethany. As the Sharks looking to go up 2-0 in the control and a few more seconds to burn off of this clock or a few more lives to take down out of Bethany. And it looks like these two last players residing in the middle of the map want to fly. The gunfight's going to come through. Los making it interesting with kill onto Chris, but it's going to be the time burned off, Jesse, and the Sharks going up 2-0 in the control. They are in the driver's seat once again in the in the respawns. And Bethany, they just can't get anything going, Jesse. In my eyes, when I'm looking at this, it, it seems like they're trying to match pace with the Sharks. And, you know, Gump, he did sneak through to get onto the platform towards B. But I need him to help his team get out of the spawn. We're not seeing a lot of teamwork from Bethany to get an attack going. Yeah, it's just tough, right? Because, I mean, the, the second kill in the follow-up was there from Demos in terms of that push that you're talking about. And Gump was able to fly forward because of that opening. But unfortunately, yeah, he just got dropped down at the worst time. And this is a really good break off here from CSULB. You find two kills. Now everybody just flies forward towards B. You've already got two ticks of progression in. You still got a double stack on the point as well. Oh, you got to go if you're Bethany. Nobody's going to touch. And that is the B zone done with two minutes and 15 seconds left now to cap A. I, I, Bethany could not be in a worse spot right now. That's a textbook B segment from the Sharks to take it down early. Two minutes to work on A. The more easier zone to capture. And this needs to be something else at a Bethany, man, if they want to find a round inside this control as they're really on the back foot now. Prism Hunter opens up with two for this offense. Over towards A, Los looking to stand tall on the front line, and he does. He holds the door. And you look wow. at Dymos closes the back door. So four go down in unison. It's a clean sweep from Bethany. 
absolutely massive. Keep your eyes on Prison Hunter, though. He's going to try to make a flank play now through the bottom portion of the map. They know that they don't have any map control. So their plan here is just to try to flip it out and try to get some time back into their favor here so they can get back inside the hill and then find a few kills. This is really all they need to do is just get the opening. And they've already found two. There's only one player left now inside of the hill. They'll be able to pinch out toxic ambush as well and now it's pretty much like a hard point hill one you just try to stun out the other side you try to stop them from getting close to being able to stop this a zone deep low and down over the head dimos just wants to hop over takes down twonky but two ticks gone toxic ambush will remove the flow from that and you got gump on the back end looking to take down chris but he finds two swings around with the pistol almost takes down toxic but a wonderful play out of him they Find their footing over towards A, and even more than that, Toxic is going to find four in a row. Wonderful nade to make it so. Big, big kills coming in from Bethany, at least to get back onto the point. Now you just need to make sure you can't let CSULB do that exact same push again, and they are setting up for it. You can see VFlow now pushing in through bottom side of the map, wants to try to get in from behind, wants to pinch on these players, and Bethany, you need to go massive here. Well, they do. Loss finds two on the inside. Beeflo now forced to play his life through church is, is going to be key for breaking this A setup that Bethany has. And here he comes. Dimos taken down through church. Gump still on the flank of his own. It's going to make it a little harder. Beeflo ends up going down. And Chris is going to make some noise in the back. Pulls out Laws. Finds two in a row, but finally cleaned up from Dimos. It's going to be Twonky alone on the hill. Can he be as heroic as he was last time? Here comes Toxic to take him down once more. Clutch plays at a Toxic ambush to keep Bethany alive inside this A zone. And only four lives remaining now for CSULB, so they need to be tactical with every one of these lives right now. And you can see Bethany, knowing they have the life advantage, just want to fly forward. They just want to take this map positioning away. CSULB, one shot left to try to break in and get in this hill. Three lives left, Gump. So patient in this attack. 17 seconds. Twonky in the back end gets worked by Dimos. It's going to leave Prism Hunter last alive in the round. And there's just no way you make this happen. He's going to jump on out, takes the challenge. Bethany puts him down. They put themselves on the board, Jesse, with a defensive round win. And they gave up the B site early, but they put their foot down at A. That was absolutely wild. I, I actually can't believe that CSUOB was not able to get back onto that zone. Very well played from Bethany College in the back half of that round to be able to close that out. Now going in towards this, I don't think it's possible for Bethany to be able to get that final defense just from how badly they were outslayed in terms of those first two rounds and the fact that they would need to win this round with all six ticks of progression just to get it to be in a kill count. So at this point, if you're Bethany, it's going to need to be not just one round, but two rounds of offense, one in a row here. Man, and how are you going to do it against the slaying pressure of V-Flow and Chris? They find four down so early now looking to pivot over to the A zone. V-Flow, Twonky, the line up two. Again, slowing this push down from Bethany Swedes. Gump's going to be caught down prone inside the A zone. That's going to be three down on this hill. And V-Flow, he's coming in for the flank still, Jesse. He's just picking them off from their own spawn. This is cruel from the sub himself. As you do see an overextension out of Bethany towards the B zone, but... I mean, what's it matter when VFlow is picking you apart, top church, like that? It's it's so hard to get out of this spawn trap once you get put into it. Because CSULB, they've just got every cut cut off and every cut watched right now through middle of the map. They will finally end up dropping CTC oh, Chris man. finally. But you still got to worry about VFlow. As your players come off spawn, he's just there, knocking them down one after another. And, I mean, they're going to hop back onto A. But VFlow again comes in from behind, drops another one, and it just keeps forcing these arrows of Bethany, these white arrows, to have to keep turning around and keep trying to oh. stop these players from pushing out. A little bit of a buffer, Jesse, but Los on an island. Inside A. See if he can come through. Twonky cutting off the rotations from the raft, leaving Los alive. He's at least going to find one, but it's just, it's not enough whatsoever. Chris is going to take down Gump on the overextension the as well. Too. So now all, all you have to do. If your sharks are just pointing your arrows to the front of the hill because Bethany are going to need to one by one funnel on in if they want to touch this zone. And they do. Able to take down Prism Hunter in the meantime as well. So stopping the clock at 11.7 seconds now. See if they can get some footing underneath them and push this another minute. I mean, I thought they were in a pretty impossible situation to win the last round out as well. And they were able to find their way. But this round through, they're down... 17 to 9 in lives at the moment. They do finally capture the A zone, so they'll get an extra minute on the clock. But has the damage already been done in terms of lives? Only seven lives left to make a big hit and need to get all three ticks of progress over towards B still. Dimos in a position now to 
Put some pressure off of the spawns. It is going to cut off Chris. And looking for the spawn player. It's Prism Hunter. He finds 2-3. Go down, Jesse. 48 seconds now. If you're low, you got to fly. Get into the B zone and allow Dymo to just do his thing in backline. And he's looking to get that done. Wonderful kill on the Prism Hunter. Now in a position, a power position at that to cut off the rest of the rotations. But he's not able to get it done. It's going to leave the rest of Bethany a little bit lacking now inside the hill. As you got 32 seconds and three lives to make it happen. I mean... I have seen crazier things happen inside Call of Duty, so I am not going to count it until it is over. Glide Bomb going to be called in. Dymo is going to drop the hammer. In the meantime, Gump loses his life. 6v2, 20 seconds left. It's do or die right now. If you're Bethany inside this control, out to the B zone they go. Another Glide Bomb gets called in. This time it's Free Flow. He's going to take down Dymos, and while that happens, Sharks are going to find the last player. So that's going to be a 3 1 inside the control. And CSULB taking their lead once more. CSULB won that one, but Bethany for sure showed a lot of heart at the end of that game there, Colin. I mean, if I'm CSULB, I am not feeling comfortable going inside of this hard point still. Yeah, you 100 point club them inside of map number one, but Bethany, man, they, they are not going down without a fight here inside like of the series right now. I mean, just watching them, the way that they were playing through those last two rounds, both rounds looked like they were almost unwinnable rounds in terms of it. And the first round, they were able to win it out. That was a very, very impressive defensive hold. To hold off for two and a half minutes over at the A site without having a ticket of progress onto it uh, from before, extremely impressive. But the fact that they still almost came back, I think without a V-Flow glide bomb there, and maybe barring another life or two on their side, they have a good chance at being able to win out that final, that round on defense there and tie it up at two to two. So Bethany, I don't think they're out of this one yet. I think they've got a shot still here. You know, I would have given it to them in that last round, Jesse. If Gump stayed alive, top church in that 7v3, you get that glide bomb down from Dymos and it, it allows Gump to maybe make a play on the, the pinch, but as soon as he goes down in church it just it opens up so much routes for the sharks to just overextend and get in behind bethany for the last plays i i saw the heart there jesse and the resilience from bethany it's wonderful but they need to get it done in the early game and it just seems like they dig their hole so early in these respawns that they just can't climb out of it towards the later ends of it by the time that they've heated up so if I'm looking at Bethany to really change something going into this map number four, Jesse, in, in this Gavitu, I really need to see them come out the gates hot. They cannot afford to come out slow. It's it's much easier said than done, though, to be it able is. to come out it hot is. inside of a hard point, right? I think if I'm looking at them and I'm looking from their for, from first map to looking at this map, it needs to be rotations. They need to be one inside of this map because Sharks sure. ran through them inside of that last map. I mean, the, the, the way that the Sharks from Hill 1 to Hill 2 to Hill 3 to Hill 4 in the first set of rotations won every single rotation is not okay. That cannot happen on a map like Gabutu. If that happens on Gabutu, you will be down 250 at the end of the first set of rotations if you allow the, the CSULB to do that exactly like that again. So I think if Bethany is smart here, as soon as they start to lose out on one of those money hills, you need to just cut your losses and rotate, make sure you're setting up full form at another hill to try to set up and get a full 60 back in your favor because they clearly have the gun skill to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with CSULB. It's just going to come down to the fact of slowing the game down, playing at their pace, and making sure they're keeping their rotations on point. No, you're 100% right. But if you're Bethany Swedes right now, Jesse, I'm going to need them in this break. Look, you got a couple minutes to talk amongst yourself. You, you got to talk about it. This is your CCL run on the line right now. You're backed into a corner. How much bite do you have? Bethany College looking to find two maps in a row to keep their run going in the LCQ. California State University of Long Beach. The Sharks, they are in the victory run right now. Looking to get one more map under their belt to close this out. And respawns, it's been their strong suit, Jesse. Gavitu, it's a tough one to make things happen. But when you're highlighting Bethany and the fact that they need their rotations... This does give a little bit more leeway in setting up early. A Gavitu, it's money hill after money hill a lot of the time. And if you can get those early rotations and set up comfortably, I can see success from Bethany. Yeah, you don't see a lot of maps like this Kabutu map where every hill can be a money hill. Even this first hill, if you get a good break off, can absolutely turn this one into a full 
60 for your team or i guess maybe a full 40 off the start of a game because it's a little bit harder to be able to lock down the full time here but you can already see good break off from both sides vflow will be the last one standing for now but re the reinforcements from both sides already there trying to fight inside over extension from gump finds the opening nice nade from Dimos lines up finds the break and three go down for the break from Bethany Suisse to start collecting time into this first deal. Only giving up 18 seconds to the Sharks, but you can see that California State, I mean, they looked for the overextension. They already rotated to the boat. It was Twonky there, shut down by Los. But you do have a good presence now from the Sharks to rotate to P2. And now in P2, CSU will be, they will be that first team here, like you said. But I think that Bethany in that first still do a really good job of at least keeping it scrappy through the early portions, and it actually opens the opportunity for them to get in. This will be the last kind of 50-50 hill before we start heading in towards our big money hills here. And right now, it's still looking like CSU will be in control of the spawns that you want heading in towards P3. It's a lot better for a star. You just can't let V-Flow heat up. He's got three in a row. Now looking to gate keep over towards Cliffs. Two line up. It's a five streak for V-Flow. Looking to make it six. Not going to happen. Gump's got his number at range. And right now, if you're Bethany, Jesse, after V-Flow just shuts the door towards the cliff side, you got to make the overextension play. And it looks like Dymos is looking to make that happen. Wonderful read out of Twonky. He's going to shut wow. it down. That was a great read from Tomkey. I mean, just to he, I think he caught just the smallest portion of Bethany player of the Bethany player running past him, and in that spot he was like, "Oh no, you don't! I'm dropping you down." Able to find the kill, and now CSU will be again first time to a money hill. Will be the first team here, first team set up, looking to start to pull away with this game, like we saw in map one. And I mean, they're just doing a great job. They're not even allowing anybody on Bethany to get close to this hill at the moment. Oh, but Bethany at the same time, they're making it scrappy. They were finding the, the kills early on to make it a little bit mixy inside the hill, but they just couldn't hold on. So the Sharks going to break through now. 34 seconds to collect for the rest of it in the power positions. They are locked and loaded right now for the Sharks, Jesse. This is a tough one to break for Bethany. Gump looks to make a run at it. He's going to be dropped by V-Flow. Double down Prism Hunter. What oh, is no. that at a Twonky? Oh, what was no. that gun? I'm not sure what his pistol in his back pocket there was, but <laughs> Twonky has snuck the line. Player number three, it was Toxic Ambush in the middle of the map, did not see him cross, and oh, it flips man. the spawns out. That is exactly what you don't want to see as a Bethany fan. And if you're a CSULB fan, you got the biggest smile on your face at the moment. Your team is in a great spot. Not only up 40, but rotations on point once again from P2 to P3. Now from P3 to P4, and I mean, starting to run away with this one. These sharks are nasty, relentless on the map, and they're never gonna let you swim safely. So you can see Bethany, we're gonna see if they can get something going towards the backside. Dynamos gets cut down, lows for the trade. And leave things even on the inside of the hill, but struggling to get anywhere close. Toxic, we're gonna make a big play on the cross with Dymos, and it's a successful break three go down. Bethany now to collect, but 24 seconds to pick up. You need to find an exit strategy soon. You can't allow yourself to get trapped again. Back to four. Losses instantly. As soon as you call that out, loss starts pushing out through middle of the map, trying to make their way to find their opening, find that way out. But he loses the gunfight. Oh, I would have man. loved to have seen him run through the top side of the beach and try to pull the spawns, but unfortunately takes the gunfight, loses the gunfight, and now you're going to have CSULB fully set up here for the docks hold. It's just things you hate, Jesse. These 1v1s that are so crucial for Bethany, they're losing them. And it's just left back half. The second set of rotations, I'm looking at Bethany to up the, an the ante a little bit because it has been a tough first set of rotations and it's looking to only get harder. As you can see, smooth sailing for the Sharks right now. Inside this P5, Prism Hunter on his power position. Back barrels, no explosive barrels to take him out here. He's just going to be picking away at these players as they walk the line. 23 seconds to push. You got one more chance if you're Bethany to break Prism Hunter from this situation. And he's got some help too from Chris. So even still, it's not done just yet. You need this rotation to P1 to be locked and loaded if you're Bethany. And they will be the first ones here. Bethany is absolutely not out of this game still. Yes, you're down 100 points. You hold on to this, it's a full 60. You're only down 40 at that point. You just got to take it as little increments as you can. 
piece after piece after piece. That's how you bring yourself back into this game. That's a very good start to this hold. You've already gotten them down. This was probably their best hold that we saw in the first set of rotations as well, once they got the full wipe. Well, they don't even need a full wipe this time because they got the full setup that they need on CSULB. Do Los. Looking to cut off the rotations, will be overwhelmed by Chris on the inside. Prism Hunter and the V-Flow taking care of business. It's an easy break from the dynamic duo. And Swanky's going to shut the door on Gump. So wonderful out of Sharks again. Now three go down for Bethany. Los looking to make a play onto it, but he's just not able to win the one-on-one. -on -one. So now 185 to 79 and counting. The Sharks looking to put this one away early. In another 100-point club fashion, but Bethany... Still a little bit of gas to go. They have the rotation over to P2, Jesse, and this is where they need to dig deep, put their foot down, and say enough's enough. Yeah, absolutely. It's 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 that famous time again, Colin, where it's perfect COD from this point perfect on. Cod. Otherwise, you are going to lose. It needs to be on point. You can still come back in this game. You need to be very, very scrappy on this hill, if not win this hill. And you've already lost two, Then now CSULB is on it. But not only do you need to be scrappy on this hill, but you need to win the next two rotations. You cannot afford to lose any rotations from this point of the game on. Swaggy watching the front of the boat. Only good for one. The break will be there for Bethany. Chris on the top deck. God goes through the door. Toxic Ambush watching it like a hawk. But it's Ethiel. Oh no. Toxic Ambush killed him. It took himself off the map. And it's going to allow now an opening for the Sharks to break back in. 26 seconds into the hill. You can't win here. You can get close. And this is exactly what we saw in the V-Flow last time. He's just spawn trapping them. With the submachine gun, won't last as long as he did last time, Jesse, but it's enough to push Bethany so far back. Bethany's lifeline pretty much relies on Lost right now. Staying alive inside of the tank on the outside of the water, but this spotted. water in CSULB. I mean, in Gavutu, the water's looking very shark infested right now, and CSULB looking to put it away here. I don't know if anybody on Bethany can even get close. Two seconds left. The players stuck inside ring. CSULB, they're going to be shutting down the run that Bethany had going, and they're going to again 100 point club them in hard point to send them packing from the CCL LCQ. Absolutely insane stuff from CSULB. I mean, their hard point looks next level right now colin i mean they they are just playing at a completely right. different level than what we just saw bethany i'll say it again csu will be out here playing chess bethany playing checkers and we even got the quote right that time so <laughs> i was gonna say <laughs> you know you know it's a good day on the desk well it'll be the second time's charm maybe you know usually they say oh absolutely i mean you get it done before that it's just only need to improvements as we go through jesse we're looking at that and csu will be it's consistency that we're seeing out of them inside of the hard point map one map four it is business as usual for the sharks and 200 point clubs just shows the prowess that they have like you said and honestly if they clean up a few mistakes inside the control that mean all of their respawns could be deadly jesse the only thing that doesn't look spick and span right now if your csu will be is the search and destroy which looks very very struggled yeah i i that's definitely a great point to bring up as well because like i said they go up against oregon next who is a very well-rounded team like i don't think that csu will be will take both will be able to take both hard points off of Oregon because Oregon, they know how to play hard point. Like they, they are a very good hard point team, but also they can win search and destroy, right? So, I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens when we get there, but I, I think that would be a really good match between CSULB and between Oregon next, I believe it will be next week that they have, maybe it's tomorrow. I'm not 100% sure on the whole schedule for everything here, but uh, I mean, CSULB, as long as they can keep this hard point up and keep beating teams like this, I mean, they're never out of a series at that point. I mean, this is the West Division, Jesse. And I'm going to stick by my West. word. <laughs> the West Division is the best division right now. Teams just look deadly inside of it. And I would be scared to be anybody in the LCQ right now working throughout this division. Just trying to get to that playoff spot. And you have to imagine that the teams are that are waiting for you once you do make it into the playoffs. It's just it's scary inside of this division. And honestly... I think if you're looking at a lot of these teams making it through the LCQ, you're looking at them to do it comfortably and swiftly because you know that as soon as you exit the LCQ in this division, Jesse, everything just gets pushed tenfold when it comes to the skill level. I mean, 
so I was doing my top 25 last night and getting everything all set up and ready to go. And I've got five West teams inside of my top eight right now. So I think that just goes to tell you just how good the West conferences are, at least how good I think the West conference is. So I'm right there with you, Colin. And the, the fun thing that I was doing yesterday too, was I was looking at everything and I'm like, everybody wants the CCL land to happen. If it happens, right. It's going to be the top four teams from both conferences that, that make it to the land. And I'm just like, Who's going to make it even out of the West? Because it is a gauntlet, not just to mention the West, but also you've got SIUE who's in the Midwest, who is also a top five team right now. So it's like, who's going to make it? Because the Western Conference is just, it, it is a bloodbath. Oh, it's a bloodbath indeed. And so is the LCQ, Jesse. I mean, we have <laughs> seen sure. nothing but great matches. I mean, you and I in our first match of the night in our last match on the night it has been wonderful out of all the teams looking to make their run but the night is now to a close as you see csulb sharks taking down bethany swedes three to one in round two in group g of the western lcq side of things and a wonderful day of matches i'm excited to see what these teams bring tomorrow folks don't forget same time same place here on College Cod and College Cod Bravo. Tomorrow we're going to be right back into things. So we can't wait to see you all tomorrow. Have a great night.